phone has decided to go wonky on me. So. Um, our next speaker is uh, Roy Ashok, who's the staff manager of business development uh, at Qualcomm's uh, Vuforia. He's responsible for core Vuforia platform product management. Uh, please uh, give a warm welcome for Roy. Hello? Okay. Thank you, Patrick. Um, how many of you are familiar with Vuforia? Just a show of hands. Okay, I built an app with Vuforia, perhaps? Okay, it's a good, uh, good crew. Thank you for those of you who have tried it. And for those of you who haven't, please go and try it right away. Um, so my name is Roy Ashok. I'm actually responsible for core platform product management at Qualcomm. I've been with Vuforia uh, pretty much since the beginning of the project, and it's been uh, really exciting to see how even ARE and then AWE has evolved uh, over time. Um, so at Qualcomm, you know, we have a vision where we want to, tr you know, we want to bring the human sense of sight to the phone. We want to change, uh, turn the camera on your phone into a digital eye that allows you to look into the world, recognize different kinds of objects, and engage and interact with them. And so to that end, Vuforia is a platform that allows your applications to see. Um, we use computer vision. It's a computer vision-based platform, so we actually process all the camera frames, uh, extract the real-world objects, compare it to known objects or to unknown ones, uh, and then tell you where a particular object is in the camera's field of view 30 times a second. So as you can imagine, that's very computationally expensive, and we spend a lot of time optimizing it um, uh, for, uh, for, both, for both Android and iOS. Um, so to give you a sense of the different types of applications and the brands that have been using Vuforia uh, successfully, uh, I thought I'll show you a quick video. And uh, so those of you who were in the tutorial session yesterday, it's the same video. Hello? 
So hopefully that gave you a sense for the different types of experiences, so the breadth of experiences that can be built with Vuforia, but also the different types of brands uh, that have been using Vuforia, investing time and money in building these beautiful applications, uh, and then repeat it, and, and then um, following that up with repeat campaigns. So clearly there's a lot of value in, in AR in general, which is, which is really good for everybody here, I guess. Um, so quick look at the ecosystem. Today we have more than 60,000 developers, more than 4,000 applications have been built both on Android and iOS in 130 countries and a list of big brands out there using the platform. You know, these numbers, uh, it's a growing community. That's really what's I think the most um, uh, important takeaway from here is, and it's a very engaged community. <coughs> Our developers are global, uh, pretty much every part of the world, uh, but uh, nice large chunks in Europe and uh, North America. Uh, I guess another slide just showing you just the sense for how uh, the growth rate of these applications just in the last few quarters, and we have more than 53 applications that have more than 100,000 downloads each. So it's really, really exciting to see that this is no, uh, this is becoming a f uh, quickly a mainstream phenomenon. Okay, so let's uh, let's go into the Vuforia platform itself. Um, so I think what what I want to you know from from a Vuforia perspective, right? It's all about delivering very compelling experiences more of the time in more environments, pretty much everywhere. It should just work as far as an end user is concerned. You know, it's not about just building a mobile app. It's uh, mobile apps. It's about building these compelling experiences that engage delight and resonate with the user, right? They have to be really, really fun. Uh, fun to use, but also just useful, um, uh, useful as an application itself for the end user. Uh, so what that means is that, you know, we have to have enough CPU headroom on that app um, for, for, um, for developers to, to build these kinds of experiences. The, the content has to be steady, right? It has to be rock solid. When, you show, when it shows up on a target or an object, it shouldn't move around when you move the phone around. It can't be jittery. Um, you know, people have very low tolerance for those kinds of experiences and they'll quickly abandon the application. Uh, and then finally, these have to work in the real world, right? It's like we're talking about end customers who are not going to perfectly hold the phone. Their hands are probably going to cover it. So it has to work pretty robustly in all these conditions. So just let me show you um, a, a few videos here just to give you a sense for... Uh, oh. Okay. Okay, um, let's see if this video works. Okay, there you go. So you'll see a very rich scene out here, lots of particle effects, a lot of animations, and then a lot of shaking also. And you'll see that it's just, you know, it just sticks to the target. That's, that's really the key that makes this uh, experience actually work for an end user. This going. Oh, okay, it is working. So you'll see the target is pretty occluded. Of course, this was a little bit of an artificial condition where you had almost the entire target covered up. But the idea is to show you that it works in somewhat real world conditions where somebody may be holding a piece of paper or it may be covered with other things, or, or you know, you're looking at a movie poster with a whole bunch of people, a bunch of heads in front of you, and it should still work. Um, let's see this one more time. Oh, okay, there you go. Again, just to show you that you can build these kinds of experiences on today's mobile devices. There's a lot of uh, uh, animation effects and you know, uh, manipulation of the background textures going on out there. Okay, so um, in terms of the product offering, there's the core Vuforia engine that enables you to do all these beautiful things. Uh, we, we offer cloud services for cloud recognition. If, uh, you know, when you have a large number of images that you want to recognize, we can go up to over a million images now. Uh, there's a target manager tool on the, on the web portal that allows you to, um, uh, to upload and manage these images and actually get feedback on them. And then you know, there's the support forums. This is a, a, this is a very engaged community. Uh, you know, anytime you'll find hundreds of developers on the forums posting. We also have our own technical staff there uh, posting, uh, um, responding to queries out there. And I think what I've seen, at least in the last few months, is a nice little trend where other developers are helping um, other developers. You know, it's not like Qualcomm tech staff always uh, responding to queries. So that's a really nice sign that the ecosystem is growing and maturing. 
Um, so if you've done mobile app development, this should not look any different. There's the core before your engine, which you get by downloading our SDK and taking the libraries out and linking them statically to your application. Uh, this contains all the uh, computer vision magic in there that looks at the camera, sets it up, uh, recognizes different objects, and tells you where they are in the field of view 30 times a second. With that information, you can then render whatever uh, content you want. And that content can live on the phone, it can live on the server, that's completely in your control. How you render it is also up to you. What tools you use for rendering are also up to you. You can use OpenGL, you can bring your own rendering engine, or you can work with Unity, uh, the game engine for which we have, um, uh, we, we built a Unity extension for. So the only question is how do you, um, how do you, how do you know what images to recognize? And the images, uh, we actually have a target manager. I think this is the older name, the target management system. Uh, it's, on, it's on our web portal. All you have to do is upload images and uh, download targets. And then when you're working with our cloud databases, you also get RESTful APIs where you can just upload these images, um, you know, because you're going to be dealing with hun probably hundreds of thousands of images there, uh, and it can nicely integrate with your uh, CMS. Um, so I think we covered that. We're available for Android, iOS, and, um, and for Unity. Uh, so you can, you know, you get the benefits of a nice uh, uh, WYSIWYG um, IDE, but also the cross-platform benefits of deploying to both platforms. Upcoming features, we can now recognize text. This is, uh, this is, this is coming very, very soon. Um, English will be the first language that's supported. Everything will be on the device. There won't be a server connection uh, required. And uh, Sesame Street's Big Bird's Words, which we first showed off at CES, will be one of the first commercial applications using, uh, using the new text recognition feature. So with that, I think I'm out of time, or a little bit over time. No, you're just about right. Yeah. OK, thank you. We have, uh, we have like one minute for questions if you want to take some yeah, questions sure. while we set up for the next speaker. Um, can you let, oh, can you grab the mic? Yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Yes. <coughs> uh, right now, Just right now we don't have anything in there. Uh, happy to talk to you about what your specific requirements are. Yes, Damon. Sure. Uh, actually, there's a whole section on that on our uh, developer portal. Happy to point you to it. But having said that, you know, ideally, you shouldn't have to go through that process. It should just work. And I'm happy to tell you that you know, we are working on that problem. And you will see a lot of improvements where it just tracks with a broader set of images that were previously uh, very difficult to do that. Um, and I, it's coming. <laughs> That's our goal eventually, right? We want to be able to recognize everything without you having to go through these gymnastics of trying to you know, modify the images or any. It should just work. Uh, that's our goal. And we're working very hard to, to achieve that. Yeah. Uh, what kind of timeline do you see that this conversion piece works out? I think that's a continuous improvement process. It's one of those things, right? And with each release, you'll see a lot of improvements. I think with our next release, you'll see some, um, some significant improvements there. Um, but you know, it's not a fully solved problem for a, for a very long time. Yes, silly. Okay, so the question is, how many objects can we handle at the same time? So I think um, it goes back to a question that came up earlier. This we we talk about it on two dimensions: how many you can track simultaneously in the camera's field of view. We generally recommend about. Um, uh, five simultaneous targets. We can, I know we can do much more because you know the, uh, the computational uh, the computational power of these devices has been increasing. It's really a function of that. But we recommend five because it works nicely across a broad set of devices. You know, Vuforia works on all Android two today on all Android two dot two devices and above. So that's a huge uh, huge set of devices, right? And then on iOS, it's iOS four and goes back all the way to the 3GS. So um, as hardware matures, that requirement will be relaxed a little bit, and you, know, you, can, do a lot, you can do a lot more. The, I think the other part of this question is, how many can you do, recognize? How, how, how large is the database, both the device and the cloud? I think that's, that's, that may be your question. Um, each device database that you have on your device can have up to 100 images each, but you can have several device databases on the phone. It's, there's no restriction on that. It's really a limitation of your hardware. 
uh, how much memory you have, both you know, in SD card and RAM, and then how, um, a, a, and you have to, but you have to swap these data uh, databases out at runtime, right, from one set of hundred to another. Um, but if you go to the cloud, uh, we can have over a million each, and uh, you know, we only say a million because we've tested a million, but you can go above that. Thank you, Roy, for uh, vamping there for us while we had this uh, technical setup. <laughs> um.